Hello, I'm Zakura and welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to make your own DIY notepads slash memo pads. They are perfect for keeping around you at your desk or on the go to write down those grocery lists or whatever else you need to keep track of throughout your day. This is actually a super simple project. You'll probably already have all the materials laying around your house and the result is mucho cute. <laughs> my Spanish is amazing, I know. Very professional looking and of course useful. To make this tutorial even easier to follow along, I have created a few printable pattern packs which are available as digital downloads over on my shop, zakira.com shop. Those packs contain the various notepad designs that I show in this video, including whale fly and strawberries and so on. And in that, everything is pre-measured and formatted and ready to print at home so you can skip all of the technical computer work. But, as always, I do want this project to be accessible and possible to make for anyone who watches this video, regardless if you have my patterns. So I will be disclosing all of my measurements and materials and so forth. So just by watching this video, you'll be well able to create your own notepads at home. So let's get to it, shall we? Tools and materials. So the materials you'll need for this project are some regular printer paper, which means that yes, you will also need access to a printer. If you do not have a printer at home, most office supply stores have public printers that you can use for a small fee, so you can look into that. Or if you can't print anything, then you can just make blank paper notepads. Not as fashionable but still functional. <laughs> Next, you'll need some chipboard. If you like, you can recycle this from an old cereal box. You'll also need some glue. You can use book binding PVA glue, but I find that this Elmer's glue all multi-purpose glue with the now stronger formula <laughs> works fantastic and it's very easy to find and very inexpensive. As for tools, you will need a paper cutter if you have one. I highly recommend it, it makes things so much easier, but if you do not have one, you can always use a regular pair of scissors. You will also need some binder clips and a small paintbrush. And that's it! I will have the full list of tools and materials listed down in the description box, including all of the specific ones I'm using in this video. So let's make some notepads. Design them. So not surprisingly, the first thing you'll need to do is to design the notepads, including all of the artwork and lines and whatnot. If you are using the printable patterns I mentioned, then this step is already done for you, so you can skip ahead to the printing. But if you are designing your own from scratch like I did, you are most likely going to need some kind of digital design software. If you're not partial to drawing and designing digitally, you actually can design your pages traditionally on paper with paints and markers and whatever else you want to use. But at some point, you are going to need to scan your designs into your computer and format them for printing, so you're still going to need some kind of software that's at least capable of that. The software I'm using is Clip Studio Paint EX, but there are also lots of other free programs out there that will do the job as well. When designing your notepads, you will need to design them at the size that you want your finished notepad pages to be. You can make your notepads any size that you wish, but the size of the notepads I'm making is 2.75 inches by 5.38 inches, and my canvas is set at 350 dpi. Very specific. <laughs> You'll see why these very specific numbers make sense later on. But again, you can design your notepads to be any size that you want them to be. For my first set of notepads, I actually designed all of them based off of the gouache doodles I painted in this video. So what I did was I imported that artwork into my program and I created some patterns that I thought looked kind of cool. <laughs> I designed a total of four different notepads, whale fly, pencils, eggs, and strawberries. Also, if you're curious about how far apart I space the lines, they're about a quarter of an inch apart, but I wasn't super specific about it. I just kind of spaced them out as wide as I felt would be comfortable for writing. Once you're done with your design and you've exported it, it's time to line them up for printing. To do that, you want to create a new canvas that is the size of your printer paper. 
In my case, I'm printing on standard US letter size paper, which is 8.5 inches by 11 inches. And I am also setting this canvas to 350 DPI. Then just import your designs in and align them on the paper for printing. One thing you're going to want to make sure, regardless of what paper you're printing on or what size your notepads are, is that you leave at least one eighth of an inch margin along all of the edges of the paper so that your design doesn't get cut off when you print it out. If you made your notepad pages the same size as mine, then exactly six of them should fit on the canvas with exactly one eighth inch margins all around. And that is why the size of my notepads is 2.75 inches by 5.38 inches, which is like so specific and random. Because it's not random, it's math. <laughs> and once everything is all lined up, next step is to print them out and cut them down. Printing and cutting. Now for this slim whale fly notepad, I'm printing out a total of six sheets, which comes to a total of 30 notepad pages. And I'm using my paper cutter to trim them down. Ta-da! Once you have all of your notepad pages cut out, you're going to want to grab your chipboard and cut out a piece that is the same size as your notepad pages. This will become the back of your notepad. And when you're done with that, you're ready for the final step. Gluing. You're gonna wanna take all of your notepad pages and line them up against the chipboard. And try to get all of the pages to line up as best as you possibly can at the top of the notepad. Then use your binder clips to hold everything in place. I like putting extra pieces of chipboard like so. This way the binder clips don't dig into the notepad pages. And once everything is secure, take your glue and squeeze a small amount on the top of the notepad. Then take your brush and brush the glue along the top to get everything smooth and even and slick. And try your best to make sure that every single page is covered in glue. Once that's done, I like to add one more binder clip on the top of the notepad to make things more secure. And then just leave it to dry. Once completely dry, you can remove your binder clips and drum roll. Your notepad is finished! How gorgeous is this? And how easy is it too? I mean, it literally was three steps. This whalefly notepad that you just saw me make is part of a notepad sampler pack that I sell on my shop, which is why it's pretty slim with 30 pages. But I also make 60 page versions that I sell individually. So there's tons of room for customization with this project. You can do whatever you want. You can make these any size you want, as many pages as you want, any design that you want. I'm kind of getting starry eyed back here because I am a DIY nut. And they make really, really great gifts too. I actually even turned my portrait painting of Dr. McCoy from Star Trek into a notepad as a gift for someone. Which, FYI, I do not sell this design for copyright reasons. But how cool is that? I definitely want to design lots of more different notepads of different sizes. Maybe make some that don't have the lines on them. I don't know, but it's full of possibilities. Super easy, inexpensive, and I hope you guys will give this project a try. And if you do, I would love to see your creations. So feel free to tag me on Instagram or Twitter. My handle is at Zakira underscore art. As mentioned, I'll have the link to the printable digital download pattern in the description box containing the designs that I made in this video, except for bones. <laughs> and of course, the physical versions of these notepads are available on my shop as well, in case you'd like a little 
handmade something something from Zakura shipped to your door. <laughs> and that is it for this tutorial. But before we wrap up this video, I wanted to take a second to give a shout out to a fellow artist and creator, Kristen from Blackberry Stationery over on Etsy and Instagram. Kristen makes super cute animal stickers and stationery, including handmade notepads. And she was very kind and gracious enough to share her process and instructions with me on how she makes her notepads, which really helped me out a bunch when it came to designing and creating my own notepads and helping to make this video possible. So big thank you to her for being awesome and helping out a fellow creator. And that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful or useful or just entertaining. And if you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Also be sure to hit that little bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. If you have a minute, be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know what you think, how do you like these notepads, and do you think you'll give this project a try? I always love hearing from you guys. Thank you to everyone who has supported me by purchasing my books or other items from my shop. If you'd like to check out my shop or subscribe to my newsletter, all that and more can be found over on my website, zakura.com. The link is down below in the description box. And until next time, stay awesome, stay inspired, always. See ya!